On the wedding day, my girlfriend's parents suddenly asked me for a 500,000 yuan security deposit. Then, my brother-in-law read out a post-marriage rules document. All the man's income must be handed over to the woman, who has full control. The man must respect the woman's parents, must transfer money and gifts on birthdays and holidays, and must be available whenever the woman's parents need him, for each child born. The man must pay the woman's parents 100,000 yuan as a thank you. If any of the above cannot be done, the 500,000 yuan security deposit will not be refunded. After my brother-in-law finished reading, he stuffed the A for paper filled with words into my arms, keep it, frame it when you get home. There was a burst of laughter from the people around. I couldn't laugh, Dad, Mom, we didn't discuss this security deposit before, and these rules are too bizarre. Do I have to give my mother-in-law a thank you fee for having a child? Do I have to give them 300,000 yuan for two children? My father-in-law smiled warmly. Good son-in-law, it's not too late to mention it today. Let's not talk about the problem with these terms. The 500,000 yuan security deposit is too much. My mother-in-law interrupted me. It represents your family's attitude and sincerity. Do you think it's appropriate to say less? I frowned. Speaking of sincerity, I think my family has given enough. We didn't hesitate to give a bride price of 288,000 yuan. A week before the wedding, my girlfriend's parents changed their minds and said the bride price had to be increased by 100,000 yuan. We agreed after considering it. I didn't expect that today. When I came to pick up the bride, they became even more excessive, asking for 500,000 yuan directly. Am I some kind of fool with lots of money? Several of the bride's relatives started to make a fuss. Who doesn't spend money when marrying a wife? My brother and sister-in-law have worked hard to raise their daughter. It's normal to want a security deposit. Isn't your family in business? Don't be so stingy. I was unhappy in my heart. Some what know at the greed of my girlfriend's parents. But after all, it's my big wedding day. I put on a smile, swearing and vowing that I would never let my girlfriend suffer after marrying me. No way. I suggested that we should sit down and discuss this matter after the wedding. No way. In the end, the best man team went all out. Everyone tried their best to persuade, but it was of no use. My friends were all speechless. My childhood friend Manuel muttered, could this also be your wife's idea? I denied without thinking. Absolutely not. I met my girlfriend in college. We've been in a long-term relationship for seven years. I know very well what kind of person she is. This is definitely her parents' idea. The guys pulled me outside to discuss. Your mother-in-law is determined to get money from you today. But we can't let your father really give them 500,000. What's the difference between this and extortion? In my opinion, don't care about anything. Just take the bride away. Sure, sure. At worst, after the wedding, you can buy some good cigarettes and wine to apologize to them. After some discussion, I went back in. I asked with a last glimmer of hope. Mom, do I really have to give this security deposit? Nonsense. My brother-in-law pointed to the bedroom behind him. If you don't give it, don't think about entering this room today. All right. All right. I've said everything I could say. Almost an hour has passed. I really can't delay any longer. I gave the friends a look. Manuel suddenly took a step forward, dragging my brother-in-law away while he was stunned, and the others rushed up to bang on the door. My mother-in-law was startled, stopped them, stopped them quickly. Seven or eight people immediately rushed up to pull us away, pushing and pulling, shouting and yelling. The scene immediately fell into chaos. My custom-made suit was torn apart, the groom's corsage was rubbed off, and my face was burning with pain, probably scratched by someone. Just when I was about to give up, there was a loud bang, and the door was knocked open. The bridesmaid screamed in unison. My girlfriend was sitting on the bed in her wedding dress, also startled by the commotion. I took out the red envelope for the door knocking and stuffed it into a bridesmaid's hand. Then I explained to my girlfriend, your parents said that if I don't give 500,000, I can't take you away. I really have no choice. Come, I'll carry you and let's go quickly. Unexpectedly, my girlfriend just sat on the bed without moving. Her expression was somewhat guilty. George, why don't you just agree to them? I was dumbfounded. I looked at my girlfriend in confusion. She avoided my gaze, looking guilty. I know that my family's requirements are a bit too much, but I promise this is the last one. It wasn't easy for my parents to raise me. I felt a mix of emotions, 
So she knew. She knew long ago that her parents were going to raise the price on our wedding day, but she didn't tell me in advance. Your parents did not raise you easily, but my parents raised me easily, even if my family is well off. Money doesn't just come from the wind, constantly demanding. It really looks bad. I don't know when my brother-in-law broke free from Manuel. He rushed in from outside and pushed me hard. I staggered a few steps and almost fell. My glasses and phone both fell to the ground. My brother-in-law kicked my phone away, then stepped on and broke my glasses. My girlfriend was anxious. What are you doing? You broke the glasses. Apologize to your brother-in-law now. I asked him sternly what he meant by this. My brother-in-law was unapologetic. Why the hell should I apologize? Who started it? The friends couldn't hold back any longer. If it weren't for your family blocking us, would we have to do this? The wedding car has been waiting for over an hour. We can't keep delaying it. My father-in-law looked stern. You still have a point. My mother-in-law was even more accusatory. George, is this how your parents taught you? Look at what you've done to my door. I took a deep breath. Mom, I was desperate. I will definitely compensate for the door, but I really can't do anything about the security deposit. Please, let me take Willow away quickly. No. Some people on the bride's side finally couldn't stand it anymore. Sister, don't make it difficult for the groom. 500,000 is indeed a bit too much dot 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 double quotes. Why make everyone unhappy on such a joyous day? I guess the groom's parents must be anxious by now. My stubbornness made my mother-in-law feel humiliated. She was anger and even started to threaten. No. Without the security deposit, just don't get married. You go home now. Everyone looked at each other. No one expected that my mother-in-law could say such a thing. Asking me to come up with 500,000, I can't do it. But asking me to turn around and leave, I can't do it either. Seeing me silent, my brother-in-law looked triumphant. You're leaving. Leaving. You dare not. Right. Anger surged up in me. Manuel quickly patted my shoulder. George, calm down. Two voices in thy head were shouting non-stop. One said, just leave. Why should I put up with this? The other said, the girl you've been longing to marry is inside. She's still waiting for you. What will she do if you leave? I've lived for 27 years, and I've never experienced such a tormenting and humiliating moment. My girlfriend looked at me, then at her mother. Her expression tangled, but she never spoke. My friends also didn't know what to do. No one dared to make a decision for me. Just as we were at a stalemate, a worried voice came from the door. George, why are you still here? Mom and Dad are so anxious. My sister actually came, and she brought my four-year-old niece. My niece bypassed the crowd and threw herself into my arms. Uncle, Grandma called you but you didn't answer. So Mom and I came. Where are your glasses? How did your face get hurt? Thinking of my family waiting for me to bring the bride home with Joe, my chest was sore and swollen. Suddenly, I felt very sorry for them. My sister was taken aback when she saw my disheveled appearance. What game are you playing? You look like this. I didn't say anything. My mother-in-law turned her head away when she saw my sister. Everyone in the room looked a bit off. My sister frowned. What's going on? My brother-in-law, the troublemaker, started shouting. You ask your brother, who doesn't give a little benefit when they marry a daughter-in-law. Can't your family afford it? Damn, I really don't understand how he has the nerve to say such a thing. Manuel quickly explained what had just happened. My sister's face was complex after listening, but she still first apologized to my girlfriend's parents. Uncle and auntie, if George has done anything inappropriate, I apologize on his behalf first. He's still young and impulsive. I'll talk to him later. My sister was very humble. My mother-in-law seemed to regain some face and straightened up, but her tone was still aggressive. Since you're here, you represent your family. Can you meet our demands? If you can, you can take Willow away immediately. My sister continued to appease. Auntie, I understand that you're doing this for Willow. In fact, our whole family loves Willow the same way. George probably didn't mention it, but we prepared a gift for Willow. I'll present it at the wedding dot 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 double quotes. My girlfriend's mom suddenly interrupted. You're a widow. It's not appropriate for you to go on stage, right? My sister's face changed. I was angry. She's my sister. How is it inappropriate? My girlfriend seemed to think her mother had gone too far and said in a low voice, blushing, Mom, stop talking. My mother-in-law didn't care. What's wrong with saying it? It's not that I have a problem with her, 
but a widow is special. On such a joyous occasion as a wedding, she really shouldn't be on stage. I don't know why your family doesn't avoid it. They don't take it seriously. Even my sister, who is usually eloquent, almost couldn't hold her face when she was said so to her face. This is her own brother's wedding. She wants to go on stage to give a blessing. Why is that not allowed? We are getting married, but that doesn't mean we are inferior. I was so angry that I wanted to argue, but my sister pulled me and told me not to speak. She forced a smile. Auntie, whether I go on stage or not is not the point. The point is to let George take Willow to the new house as soon as possible, whatever we do. The starting point is for the good of the young couple, right? If we delay the auspicious time, man affect the wedding, wouldn't that be counterproductive? My brother-in-law sarcastically said, you did catch the auspicious time when you got married, but what use was it? You still killed your husband. My sister stood there as if she had been struck by lightning, blood rushed to my head, and I swung a punch at my brother-in-law. He was unprepared and was knocked to the ground by me, but I was still not satisfied. I lifted my foot to kick this foul mothered thing and was hastily stopped by a crowd. My brother-in-law covered his face and screamed in pain. I glared at him and yelled, try talking nonsense again. Seeing my sister holding back tears, my heart ate. My brother-in-law's death was an accident, and my sister hasn't gotten over it in two years. She didn't want to remarry, saying she could live well on her own with the niece, but we could all see that she was never happy. For the past two years, the whole family has been treading lightly for fear of bringing up my sister's sad past. But I didn't expect my brother-in-law to be so foul-mouthed, and in front of my sister, my father-in-law was also very angry but not at his son, but at me. No matter what, you can't hit people. My mother-in-law was even more dramatic, holding her son and crying and screaming as if I had killed someone. Only my girlfriend kept apologizing to my sister. Seeing that the situation was getting out of hand, everyone hurriedly separated us. I was taken to the living room and everyone was urging me to calm down. They repeatedly emphasized that today is a great day for a wedding and I shouldn't be angry. My sister wiped away her tears and comforted me. George, don't be angry anymore. Don't let me affect your wedding with Willow. My niece didn't understand what was happening and said timidly, Uncle, you're scary when you're angry. I felt like I was about to explode. Manuel, who knows me best, whispered in my ear. The urgent task is to take the bride away as soon as possible, otherwise it will be too late for the wedding. We'll deal with that kid later, after this fuss. I guess your mother-in-law and the others will be too embarrassed to ask for money. I closed my eyes. I silently told myself to calm down dozens of times. As long as that kid apologizes to my sister immediately, and they don't mention that damn deposit, I won't hold it against them today. At this time, my mother-in-law led my brother-in-law out. George, you apologize to David immediately. We won't hold this against you today. I raised an eyebrow. Manuel, fearing I would get impulsive again, immediately held me back. But my mother-in-law looked at me sideways, her voice raised by eight degrees. Your behavior today makes me doubt whether my daughter will be happy marrying you. My sister laughed awkwardly. Auntie, what are you talking about? George and Willow are so good together. How could they not be happy? But my mother-in-law's next sentence gave us all a shock. So, the deposit needs to be increased by 100,000. Transfer it on the spot. My sister was so anxious that she stomped her foot. Auntie, you guys dot 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 double quotes. Manuel blurted out. Damn, are you crazy about money? I was so angry that I laughed. My brother-in-law, having forgotten the pain of his wound, started to blabber again. Is it your turn to interfere in our family affairs? Did we ask for your money? Get out of here. Listen, it's a transfer on the spot. Verbal agreement won't work. Neither will an IOU. My girlfriend shouted at her mother discontentedly. Mom, my mother-in-law didn't feel that her demand was shameless at all. She scolded my girlfriend. You shut up. Who am I doing this for? Isn't it all for you? At this time my sister's phone rang. It was my mom. She looked troubled. Should you discuss it with mom and dad? Discuss. Are we discussing whether our family should give another 600,000? I feel like a clown right now, but I can't let our family become a joke. I took the phone and answered it. My mom was anxious, as if she wanted to come out of the phone. What's going on? Why hasn't anyone come back yet? I calmly said, Mom, we'll be back soon. Goat, you better hurry up. 
After hanging up the phone, my mother-in-law showed a satisfied smile on her face. Have you decided? Yeah. If you've decided, you can transfer the money to me or to Willow's dad. My brother-in-law grinned, looking like a villain who had succeeded. My father-in-law, with a happy face, took out his phone and said he would send me his bank card number now. I smiled faintly. Don't misunderstand. When did I say I was going to give money? My girlfriend's mother was taken aback. Under her puzzled gaze, I took my niece's hand and called to my brothers. Thank you all for your hard work today. Let's go. My sister was confused. Where are you going? Home. Are you crazy? Willow is still here. What are you going back for without the bride? I said word by word. I'm not getting married. My sister's eyes widened suddenly. My girlfriend shivered. My girlfriend's mother jumped up like she was bitten by a dog. What did you say? Not getting married. Everyone looked at me incredulously. Manuel asked in surprise, are you serious? With a clang, my girlfriend's father's phone fell to the ground. Oh, that reminds me. I said to my niece, Lola, go pick up my phone. She obediently ran over and got my phone from me. Her childish voice loudly said, Uncle, your phone is broken. Who did it? Accounts will have to be settled sooner or later. Let's leave it like this for now. Aren't we going to take the bride with us? My eyes darkened. I turned to look at my girlfriend. She was staring at me, already crying her eyes out. I also felt bad. After all, our many years of feelings are not fake. But because of this, her performance made me even more disappointed. I gave a self-deprecating smile, didn't say anything, picked up my niece and started to walk out. My brothers looked at each other, but this time no one tried to persuade me. No one in the room made a sound. Just as I was about to reach the door, my girlfriend's brother David rushed over. My sister has been with you for so many years, and you say you're not getting married, are you still a man? My girlfriend's mother grabbed my sleeve, you can't go. I was helpless. Auntie, you said it, no deposit, no wedding. She was furious, you're quite capable. Are you threatening me? Call your parents right now, right now. I want to ask, is this the attitude of your family towards getting a daughter-in-law? If you dare to step out of this door today, you will never see my daughter again in your life. Even if your parents come to apologize personally, it won't work. At this point, she still thinks I'm threatening them. I didn't want to waste my breath on them anymore. But my girlfriend's brother was blocking the door and wouldn't let me leave. Your parents run a factory. What does 500,000 mean to your family? You talk so nicely usually. It's all lies, isn't it? I think you don't love my sister at all. I gave him a cold look, he was snorting at me. What? Am I wrong? I don't believe your family can't afford this money. I suppressed my anger and told him to get out of the way. No. At first, he was blocking me from taking the bride away. Now he's blocking me from not taking the bride away. My blood pressure was soaring, and I felt that I had reached my limit of patience. My girlfriend's father shouted to someone, lock the door. Several hot-tempered friends couldn't stand it anymore and started cursing. If you dare to lock the door, we will call the police and say you are legally detaining us. David looked ferocious. This is my house. I can lock it if I want. For a while, the room was in chaos. My sister was so anxious that she was about to cry, trying to calm everyone down. My niece covered her ears. Uncle, it's so nosy. My patience was completely exhausted. I grabbed my girlfriend's brother's arm and in his panicked eyes, I pulled him aside. He really thought his small body could stop me. I walked out the door without looking back. David's angry curses came from behind. To hell with you. Suddenly, my shoulder hurt sharply. At the same time, my niece was hit by something and burst into tears. My heart skipped a beat. I watched as a lump the size of an egg rose instantly on my niece's forehead. The entire swollen lump was dark red and looked horrific. The normally well-behaved and strong child was crying her heart out now. My sister rushed over, her voice trembling with fear. Lola, how are you? Lola, under my feet was a baseball bat as thick as an arm. I was horrified. So, this beast David hit my niece with this thing. How dare he? I handed my niece to my sister and picked up the baseball bat from the ground. My eyes looked murderous. David was startled. His mother stood in front of me. Children have soft skin. It looks serious, but it's not a big deal. It will be fine in a while. His father was guilty and tried to make excuses for his son. If you hadn't insisted on leaving, David wouldn't have been in such a hurry. I ignored him. My friends pulled David out from behind. 
and without a whir, I hit him on the head with the bat. He instinctively raised his hands to block, and I hit his arms hard, causing him to scream in pain. There were ghasts all around. I don't know who took the bat away, and my upper body was held down by many people. I kicked him in the chest. David staggered back a few steps and sat on the ground, half dead. I wanted to go up again, but was held back by a group of people. My girlfriend's mother suddenly wailed, murder, you're a madman, you're going to kill someone. I pointed at David, if anything happens to Lola, I won't mind really killing you. After saying that, I took my sister and niece and turned to leave. The wedding car was downstairs, the driver had long been impatient. My sister and I carried my niece into the car and urged the driver to go to the hospital immediately. Lola, don't sleep. Please don't sleep. George, something's wrong with Lola. What should we do? Dot 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 double quotes. My sister started crying out of fear. My heart was instantly enveloped by huge fear. I trembled and told the driver to drive faster. We were in several red lights on the way. After arriving at the hospital, the doctors and nurses gave us a green channel and arranged a brain CT for Lola as soon as possible. Self-blame, regret, pain, anger. Various emotions intertwined into a net, suffocating me. My sister had already cried her eyes out. The short half an hour felt like a century when the doctor told us that there was no obvious damage to Lola's brain, but for safety's sake, it would be best to keep her in the hospital for 24 hours, our hanging hearts finally dropped. My sister cried with Joanne kept thanking the doctor. I sat on the ground, exhausted. Only then did I belatedly realize that my palm had been scratched by my own nails at some point, and the blood wouldn't stop. George, I'll stay in the hospital with Lola. You go to the hotel first. Mon, and Dad must be going crazy. Sis, I'm sorry dot dot dot. Don't blame yourself. Go ahead. No matter what decision you make, I'm on your side. And so are Mon and Dad. I nodded. I rushed to the hotel without stopping, and Manuel was waiting for me at the door. He told me about the situation after I left my girlfriend's house. It took a while for my girlfriend's brother to recover after I left. My girlfriend's parents were both angry and annoyed. They didn't think they were wrong. They just felt that my leaving had embarrassed them. You and your uncle and aunt need to be prepared. They've been shouting that they want to con and settle the score with you. I said coldly, let them. When I went in and saw my parents, both of them looked upset. I walked up to them guiltily. I wanted to say sorry to my parents. Before I could open my mouth, my dad spoke first. Your sister has already called us. Fortunately, Lola is fine. Now the guests are here. No matter what, we have to give them an explanation. My mom straightened my messy clothes for me, then patted me. Let's go. I tried to calm myself down. Okay. Our family of three walked onto the stage under the surprised gaze of everyone. I looked at the crowd. There were my friends and family, leaders and colleagues, as well as my parents' longtime friends and business partners from all walks of life. Everyone was puzzled, wondering why the wedding hadn't started yet and why there were no people from the bride's family. I slowly opened my mouth. Dear friends and family, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Due to some special reasons, the wedding can't be held today. There was a stir in the crowd. I know many of you have taken time out of your busy schedules to attend my wedding, wanting to give me your sincerest blessings. Many of you have even traveled from afar just to witness my happiness in person. I am deeply sorry for disappointing you. I bowed deeply. I will return the cash gifts to each of you, but I know that this cannot make up for my apologies and mistakes. Regardless, please stay and finish this meal. Then, I went table by table with my parents, toasting and sincerely apologizing to each guest. The host was bewildered, standing on stage, not knowing what to say or do. While we were toasting, there was a commotion at the door. I saw my girlfriend's parents storming in angrily. My girlfriend was still in her wedding dress, being dragged along by them, crying so much that her makeup was ruined. Her mother, like a madwoman, charged straight to our table and, before anyone could react, she violently yanked the tablecloth with both hands. All the dishes, drinks, cups, and bowls clattered to the floor. Making a huge mess, the guests screamed in shock. My father's face darkened as he asked them why they had come. The crazy woman glared and said, How dare you ask me? Your family left the bride alone on the wedding day, eating and drinking here shamelessly. Have you no decency? My mother couldn't help but question, Don't you know why George left? 
Our granddaughter is still in the hospital. The mad woman spat on the floor. I'm not blind. It's just a bump on the head. What's the big deal? Are you rich people trying to scam us with this nonsense? Aren't you ashamed? My mother, who never argues with anyone, was trembling with anger. My girlfriend's father jumped on stage and grabbed the microphone from the host. Stop eating. What's there to eat? Do you know why the wedding was called off? George, that heartless man, irresponsibly walked away on the wedding day. My poor daughter devoted herself to him for seven years, only to end up like this. I marveled once again at their shamelessness. The host tried to calm things down. Bride's father, please calm down. Let's talk this over calmly. I can't calm down. If George's family doesn't give us an explanation today, if they don't give my daughter an explanation, no one will have peace. Manuel couldn't stand it anymore and also got on stage. Why don't you talk about how your family demanded an exorbitant amount of money, threatening that the wedding couldn't happen unless you got 500,000 yuan? Everyone was shocked. 500,000. I heard the groom's side was blocked by the bride's family demanding 500,000 yuan when they went to pick her up. My goodness, why don't they just rob a bank? How greedy. If my daughter found such a good family, I wouldn't ask for anything. Blind and short-sighted. You guys might not know, but this family asked for the bride price twice. The crowd started to buzz with discussions, everyone having something to say but without exception. They were all criticizing the behavior of the bride's parents. The bride's mother, however, felt no guilt at all. Hands on her hips, she defended herself. We are parents wanting some security for our daughter. So what? So what? There are so many cases of daughters-in-law being bullied by their in-laws, and the divorce rate is so high. Who can guarantee what will happen to my daughter after she marries into their family? My mother took the bride's hand. Willow, ask yourself, how have I treated you all these years? My girlfriend lowered her head and softly said, good. Then she added, but my mom says anyone can say nice things. Once I become a daughter-in-law, it will be different. Only money is tangible and can prove sincerity. My mother's expression instantly turned to one of disappointment and helplessness. My heart sank as well. Over the years, my parents had long considered my girlfriend as their daughter-in-law and treated her like their own daughter. It was unimaginable how much her words just now hurt them. Her father started shouting on the stage again. Everyone knows your family has money. 50,000 yuan is nothing to you. A small test like this and you're unwilling to comply. It shows you don't truly value my daughter. The host finally couldn't stand it anymore. Bride's father. Although I am an outsider, I can assure you that the groom's family is absolutely sincere in marrying your daughter. Come on. You were hired by their family. Of course, you would speak for them. The host pulled out a piece of paper from his pocket. This is what the groom gave me during our rehearsal yesterday. They had prepared a surprise for your daughter, which was supposed to be announced at today's wedding. Her father sneered. What kind of surprise? Just some worthless sweet talk about treating my daughter as their own, saying we are one family from now on. Anyone can say that, the host sighed and shook his head. The groom's family had decided long ago to give your daughter a three-bedroom apartment in a school district, a shop in the city center, and a 50,000 yuan car. With every word the host said, the shock on her father's face deepened. W what did you say? Don't believe me, see for yourself. The details of the apartment, which unit in which complex, the shop's address, everything, is written clearly. The groom's family planned to take the bride to transfer the property ownership after the wedding. The keys are with the groom's sister, and she was supposed to hand them over to the bride during the ceremony. Her father looked like he had been struck by lightning, completely dumbfounded. Bride's father, the house, the shot, and the car, all together are worth several million. If you say this doesn't show they value your daughter, then what does? I've been a host for many years and never seen an in-law family so generous to their daughter-in-law. Down below, my girlfriend and her mother were equally shocked. Both of them stood there like statues, taking a long time to recover. The first thing her mother did was blame me. You child, why didn't you tell us something this important earlier? I replied expressionlessly, your family didn't tell me in advance about the demand for a security deposit either. She laughed awkwardly then skillfully switched her expression. She turned to my parents with a fawning smile. In-laws, look at this mess. It was all a misunderstanding. Ha ha. Husband, come down quickly and apologize to the in-laws. I always said we shouldn't listen to you. George and Willow have been together for so many years, and the in-laws are such respectable people. 
How could they possibly mistreat Willow? It's all your fault, my girlfriend's father. Looking terrified yet delighted, kept nodding. It's my fault, my fault. Their stark change in attitude terribly disgusted me. My parents' faces were still grim, not changing in the slightest because of their attitude. My girlfriend, full of guilt, moved closer to my mother. Mom dot 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 double quotes. My mother stepped back. Willow, you and George haven't had your ceremony yet. For now, just call me aunt. My girlfriend was stunned. By now, the guests understood everything. They all looked at my girlfriend's family with disdain. My father ignored my girlfriend's parents and addressed everyone. I apologize for today. For making everyone witness this joke. My son's wedding is cancelled dot 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 double quotes. Wait. Wait. My girlfriend's mother panicked. In loss. How can we cancel the wedding now? The misunderstanding has been cleared up. Let the two kids continue with the ceremony. Come on. Willow. Hold George's hand. My girlfriend timidly glanced at me. I remained unmoved. Her mother pushed her towards me. Hurry up. My girlfriend knew me well. She knew that the way I looked now didn't mean I was really okay. She was on the verge of tears. George, please don't be like this. My cousins, who had already been simmering with anger over Lola getting hurt at their house, bluntly issued an eviction order. You are not welcome here now. Leave immediately. My girlfriend's father was mortified but still pleaded with my parents. In loss, today we were wrong. I sincerely apologize to you. You can blame me all you want, but George and Willow have been together for so many years, as parents. We have seen it with our own eyes. Mother-in-law, this is a matter of a lifetime of happiness for both of them. We must consider it carefully. Her mother quickly chimed in. Yes, yes. Mother-in-law, if you are really upset, you can hit me. My mother was conflicted. She hated what they had done to date, but had to admit that my girlfriend's father had a point. Seven years of relationship is not something that can just be dismissed. I spoke softly. What if I say the wedding can continue? But there are two conditions. Is that okay? My girlfriend's eyes lit up. Her mother nodded eagerly. Yes. Yes. Any conditions are fine. I said, we won't give you the house, the car, or the shop. And you have to return all the bride price and the money given during the car greeting. If you agree, the wedding will continue. Her parents' faces instantly changed. They spoke in unison. How can that be possible? I sneer. Already knowing this would be their reaction, I made a gesture of showing them out. My girlfriend's face turned bright red with shame and anger. Her parents still wanted to say something but were firmly invited out by Manuel and the groomsmen. The wedding I had long looked forward to had turned into a farce. And now, the farce was finally over. After my parents and I saw off all the guests, we immediately went to the hospital to see Lola. But to our surprise, we saw my girlfriend's parents there as well. Her mother, with a big forced smile, tried to get close. In-laws, we came to see Lola, and we brought David to apologize. But she won't let us into the ward. Please help us talk to her. It was only then that I noticed David behind them. Seeing that scumbag made my blood boil. Get lost. Don't make me beat you up in the hospital. A flash of anger crossed David's eyes, but his father gently pulled him back, and he turned his head away angrily. His father tried to speak with a smile, but I interrupted. You all get lost too, or I'll call the police and report you for harassment. David immediately jumped up. You almost broke my arm, and I haven't called the police yet. Don't worry, this isn't over. If you want to call the police, go ahead. My mother didn't give them any face either. Our position is very clear. Even if you come to see my daughter, we won't change our minds. People were coming and going in the hospital and soon our commotion attracted a lot of attention. Passersby pointed and whispered about us. But our family wasn't afraid. It wasn't us who were in the wrong. My girlfriend's mother finally dropped the pretense. She threw a bag of apples she was holding to the ground and started cursing. Who do you think you are? Just because you have a bit of money. I spit on you. What a joke. Don't come crying to us later. David, let's go. The three of them left cursing, even my well-mannered parents were angered by them. I knew what mattered most to them. That very night, I called my girlfriend's mother, demanding they return all the bride price. As expected, it was as if I had taken her life. You must be dreaming. Is there any sense in taking back what was already given? My daughter was abandoned by you. And you think you bear no responsibility. This money is compensation for all the years of her youth she spent with you. It's what we deserve. Shameless. 
absolutely shameless. I was increasingly grateful that I hadn't become family with these people. I said directly, you keep talking about your daughter, but in reality, all this money went to your son, right? Including the 500,000 yuan security deposit, which was also demanded for your son. Willow is easily influenced. Even though she knows you're biased, she still lets you endlessly demand money from my family. Our family's affairs are none of your business, in any case. If you want the money back, it's impossible. I responded calmly, no problem, then we'll see each other in court. No matter how long it takes, I'll get this money back from you. Moreover, I won't just demand the return of the bride price. In a few days, my sister will personally file criminal charges against your son. Get ready to see your son in jail. Hearing my firm stance, she broke down and started hurling insults at me. She called me a heartless man, cursed me for being stingy despite having money, and wished me a terrible fate. I hung up the phone. My girlfriend sent me numerous apology messages, but I didn't respond to any of them. A few days later, she blocked my way at the entrance of my garage. With tears in her eyes, she asked, George, can't you really forgive me? I spoke in a low tone. Willow, I think I've made myself very clear, haven't I? Do I need to officially notify you again? We are breaking up. She was stunned, and tears started falling down her face, demanding the bride price, the car money. The security deposit, all of that was my parents' idea. I really didn't want your family's money. I can do without your family's house and car too. What difference does it make if it wasn't your idea? Did you know about your parents' plans or not? If you knew, why didn't you stop them? You just played the role of a passive victim. What effort did you put into our relationship? None. You just sat there, pretending to be innocent and pitiful, as if anything not directly suggested by you had nothing to do with you, you are a person, an independent individual, who you marry, when you marry, how you marry are all decisions you can make on your own. But you chose to sit there and make things difficult for me. You already made a passive choice, so please. Don't say you didn't do anything or want anything. You do want things, you just don't want to voice them yourself. You are no different from your parents. I slammed the car door and drove off. I once firmly believed that she and I would make it to the end. Who could have foreseen such an outcome? It's just a case of fate playing tricks on us. Her parents refused to return the bride price, so I took decisive action and sued them. In court, her mother hysterically cried, saying that the bride price had been used to pay off her son's gambling debts and that she couldn't possibly repay it. She claimed it would be better to kill her than to ask her to repay the full amount, that the court ruled that the bride price must be returned in full. A month later, my ex-girlfriend's parents still refused to budge, so I applied for compulsory enforcement and finally recovered the debt. Half a month later, under my persuasion, my sister sued David for intentional injury. Everyone in their family, except my ex-girlfriend, came to plead with my sister. I advised my sister not to see them because her soft nature might lead her to relent and let them off the hook. So, they knelt outside our door and later, with malicious expressions, threatened that if their precious son was sent to jail, they would fight us to the end, claiming they had nothing to lose. My sister was very anxious and asked if we should let it go since Lola had already recovered. I said, if throwing tantrums and being unreasonable worked, why would we need the law? Trying to protect ourselves through concessions usually leads to losing more. The other side can always use the same tactics to threaten us. Today, it's about the lawsuit and prison. If we give in now, what if tomorrow they demand a million yuan or threaten to destroy us? When would it ever end if we keep retreating? I called the police, and my ex-girlfriend's parents were detained for 15 days at the police station. I said, if you continue to repeatedly threaten our safety, I don't mind having your whole family reunite in prison. David was eventually sentenced to three years in prison. I heard that once the inmates learned about the reason for his imprisonment, they made his life miserable. After breaking up with me, my ex-girlfriend, in deep reflection, completely severed ties with her parents. Their actions on the wedding day ruined the wedding and became a laughingstock among neighbors and relatives, a topic for idle chatter. Perhaps, that 500,000 yuan security deposit will be the biggest regret of their lives.